So peeling back the curtain a little bit, the choir rehearses songs weeks and weeks in advance. <laughs> we, like many in our country, misread how Tuesday was going to go. And so that song may feel a bit out of context, but it also speaks kind of a truth. Um, and I'm actually, with this, skipping to the end of my <laughs> reflection. Um, and there's the hashtag coming up soon, by the way. Um, which the truth is that we will not be effective if we are only led by outrage. And now I'll go back to the beginning. I mean, we have to find joy in each other and in the work of solidarity. We have to find joy in the work for justice. It doesn't mean that we stop being upset, but it means that we are not clouded by outrage or fear. And that's not easy. Uh, going back to last week, uh, we talked about how Unitarian Universalism lacks a central story, lacks a pantheon, lacks a personality uh, that would help us persevere in dark times, little knowing how soon those dark times would be upon us. Story is, is, is so powerful. We as human beings are the storytelling creature and yet we as Unitarian Universalists do not avail ourselves of this very, very powerful tool. So where do we find our power? Where do we find our sustenance in the dark night? So I think it's an empathy. And empathy, in a way, is a kind of a story. And in fact, when you read a story, what you are doing is empathizing. So empathy seems to be a layer below story. It is one of these essentials that I like to get to. Empathy engages, it is a spiritual exercise. It gets you out of your ego. It identifies with. It is contrary to narcissism. It involves the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Now, to empathize with another is impossible without having a resonance of that other inside of yourself. So empathy is an exercise, an insight. It is a practice of mindfulness. Empathy creates a bond between people. The word religion comes from the Latin word religare or something like that. I never took Latin. <laughs> but when I Google religion etymology, it says religare, <laughs> which means to bind. Compassion is a religious essential I would say even if your understanding of the divine is exclusively theistic, that when you engage your God in prayer, 
that even in that relationship, it is an exercise of empathy. The stories that we tell about our religious heroes, our empathetic experiences, and the stories that we tell to each other are empathetic invitations. We have the benefit of attaching and framing that empathy within our seven principles. And so together with our seven principles, which I have called methods and aspirations, we can use them to help us empathize with each other, with the stranger, with adversaries, with animals. with the web of all existence <coughs> and all beings within it. Now empathy is natural in human beings and in fact other <coughs> beings as well, but it is in competition with some other naturally occurring emotions and behaviors such as outrage, anger, fear, disgust. Empathy operates in the same field as these other behaviors. So it is up to us to practice being empathetic. Now our culture is currently awash in anger and outrage and fear. We wake up this past week with dread in our stomachs, unable to fall back asleep. We need to practice empathy. Our culture is awash in outrage, anger, and fear. the lack of empathy for which we are in part responsible has put our nation in a dark place. I do not think that we were listening very well to people who were expressing pain in ways that were off-putting in ways where we took the bait and became outraged, which cut off empathy and cut off all discussion and cut off opportunity to be in a different place today. I don't mean here that we need to convince other people, the idiots and fools and racists and bigots and misogynists to be empathetic, although we do, but we also need to work on our own empathy to find out what is going on, what is behind this terrible emotion that you're feeling. How can I relate to you there? Those emotions and behaviors are not expressed by people who are healthy and whole or happy. And we are all in this together. And we have failed each other. It's not over. And in fact, this 
may be the beginning to something amazing. But that's going to take a lot of work because we are in a deep hole right now. And the first step, I think, is listening. And it's also a good test. You cannot listen through outrage. You can listen through heartbreak. You cannot listen through fear. You can listen through faith. That deep trust in meaning and values. That I, I'll argue with our principles that it is more than just promotion and affirmation of the worth and dignity of all people. It is deep trust in the worth and dignity of all people. Hmm. That's hard right now, huh? Well, it's hard right now. But it's taken us to the core. We don't have stories, but we can engage our empathy and focus. Empathy gets us outside of our ego, outside of our fear. It may be empathy with the suffering Messiah or even the equanimity of the enlightened one. It may be empathy with the bereaved friend or a joyful stranger or a hurt adversary an angry person. <clears throat> but we are called to it now. And we are called to listen with empathy and begin the work from there. And I don't actually know what step two is. But I think step one is engaging with compassion and love as much as you can. Not being blinded by outrage, which doesn't mean not feeling it, but just not getting hooked by it. Not letting it make your decisions. The hope and the faith is that through empathy, we can build a bridge.
So I'm hearing tweets of all things on this day of gratitude. Which is a good place to start. No one's been assassinated. There are no tanks in the streets. And democracy is not perfect. But we have democracy. Of course, democracy is a religious principle of ours, a sacred right and an exercise of our religious values. So we have some religious work to do. I'm also being reminded that practicing empathy allows us to write better stories for ourselves and for the world. How does that happen? We connect. We learn to communicate. We learn to listen better. Hopefully we model listening so that others learn from our example. This becomes a spiritual practice and not an easy one, and not one without danger, emotional and otherwise. But this is the path that lies before us as a congregation, and as individuals, and as a nation. And how lucky are we that we have this place to gather, to mourn, to galvanize ourselves, to take comfort and get strength, to be angry, to vent, and let ourselves return to a place of power, which is a place of peace. We have been practicing in this conversation, girding for the weird. Do you remember this? It just got really freaking weird in America right now, but we are a group of people who are practiced at carrying weirdness. I'm very grateful for your presence here today. Let it begin with us. <laughs>